Okay, so now we've created our survey on the app and we've sent it, we can now log in to uh, Heat Engineer Online. So we've got the, the uh, website at the top, www.heat-engineer.com. And we go to uh, login and I'll type in the email address for my demo account. And one of the first things, um, particularly when you first create an account, is you can go to account details here and upload your logo. Um, and of course, it will appear in, in this location here. Go back to the dashboard. Um, uh, you may want to invite more surveyors. Um, so you click on your surveyors here. And you can just click on send a request for a survey to join. And type in their email address, press submit, and they get receive an email to join your account as a surveyor only. So they won't be able to log on online to see all your projects. They'll only be able to send you surveys. Go back to the dashboard again, and uh, we've got the theme up here, so we can change the the colour. So if I just go to green here, um, we've got the building materials, um, completed reports, reports in progress. So you know the ultimate goal is really to get your completed reports. So if I click on click completed reports here, and here's where you'll be able to download the PDF. Um, click on the on on the project to continue with it if you want to. Um, and the MCS compliance certificate if it's for uh, an MCS project, so heat pump or biomass. Um, one of the things is once you've completed your report is that actually not only does it have the project reference but also the date and the time and also the technology, so whether it's ground source heat pump air source or biomass or oil, so it appears. So it's a nice way to re um, as, a, as a reference really. And reports in progress, here we can see the progress bar and the surveyor's name and also which device they sent it from. So it's e really easy to change it um, to, to go back into that um, survey and, and, and continue with it. So if I click on to submitted surveys and if we click on the sea view cottage which we did in our example, so I'm just going to click here and you can see that when we did the um, started the survey we typed in project reference name uh, and a, the client name and also the postcode so you can see that's coming through so you could you know potentially sort of finish that off um, we go to uh, regional data so click on the degree day data map for the UK and I think yeah we've got a TR postcode so it's uh, in Cornwall area so if we use 4 and we see 4 is the southwest so we go to X and we go to southwest that's the degree data you we're going to use and then Plymouth and then the altitude adjustment we don't know that so what I'm going to do is copy this um, postcode click on the link here and what we can do here is paste the uh, e, the, the um, postcode and it tells us the height above sea level so yeah seven meters above um, go back to the heat loss and we can just put below there so we can use that and then we go to next so there's there's nine steps through this process and we can uh, select the technology so the technology is car has got carried through from when they did the survey but again we might not know what technology we want to use we have the amount of rooms presented here and the total floor area represented and we could at this point select the manufacturer if we if we know what it is um, but at this, t at this stage we certainly don't know what model because of course uh, we haven't completed the heat loss we go to next so throughout these um, nine steps if the survey is being completed um, successfully then you shouldn't have to spend longer than between five and ten minutes going through going through these steps really so you can see the information that's come through from the server. So of course we've got the room names, the design temperature, um, and we have the um, the air changes per hour when the room was built, etc. Now if we click on um, the year, you'll notice that if we typed in say um, 2000, oops, 2016, okay, 
the um, air change per hour is reduced and also the design room temperature has changed as well. Let me go back again, and just put that back to say 25 and, it's, and it, it changes back. The um, what's above the room, what's below the room and the type of emitter as well. Um, if we had notes in that would appear green, we can at this stage we could still click on it and add it and add a note timer as well. Uh, the request consultant complete. Um, lots of um, people have requested this just in case they if they got inundated with work or they have to quickly leave the office, and they want a consultant to quickly complete it. So um, if I click on request consultant, what would happen there if you tick confirm and and the confirm button here? Um, my office would receive um, the survey, so it would be sent to our admin account, and we would review it, uh, and then of course um, send you a uh, an email saying Are you sure you want us to complete this for you know an estimated price of fifty pounds, um, and um, once you you confirm that we would you know we would proceed with that. If you sent it by accident, then of course we'll we'll always confirm if you if you're sure you want us to complete it anyway. So go to cancel and go back. Um, go to next, and uh, if I look at um, the dining room you'll see that was the conventional room and the reason why that's bedroom one is highlighted um, uh, blue is it is a vault room with a vaulted dimensions so that's all looks all good go to next and again we're reviewing the room with vaulted dimensions we've got the, the dimensions we typed in and the type of wall and the total volume and the roof area as well and we got this as a gutter as a reference as well so we could see, um, I think it was complex room three, wasn't it? Bolded room three, just to remind us what shape it was. Go to next, and um, at this point, it's starting to look at all the building materials. And you, you'll recall that um, we typed in a um, because one of the walls on the vaulted rooms was uh, an internal room. We have to make sure we select an internal building material. So we go to plasterboard we're studying and now it's it's not orange anymore we've selected a material go to next and also if you if you remember I deliberately missed out a roof glazing within the within the app survey as well so we can it reminds us so again we could put something in there so um, just use that and um, at any point we, if we, you know, if we had to load some some orange cells, which are highlighting building materials missing, <clears throat> and we weren't quite sure, you know, the description, etc., and got some additional information, we can go to building materials here, and we can add um, our building material to the list here. So description and new value, go to cancel, or you can do a little bit of a calculation. Um, and what we're doing here is adding the building materials and there's another video on that so you can do a little bit of a calculation on, on a U value go back to cancel on that and we go back to step 7 and select that window I go to next and we've got the floors, the ceilings, that's all good the copy all button here is really useful so again if you've got like 20 rooms and um, they all have the same, you know, floor construction. It, instead of clicking on the cell individually, if it's missed out on the survey, it can take a bit of a while to do that. What you simply do: is select one, um, go to copy all, uh, and then it populates. And then click on it, and it just pop, populates it all the way down. So that's quite a useful feature there. So there you go. Because I know that bedroom one is a uh, a first floor room. Let's make sure have the appropriate um, floor material. Let's go to next, and we've done it. So we completed the heat loss. So it says that you know our initial technology we selected was an air source heat pump. The output is uh, output required is 1.73, and tells us what the external uh, temperature is. And we've got the watts per meter squared area highlighted. And if we had you know loads of rooms, um, again there'd be another video showing, um, which I'm going to illustrate. Um, a survey with lots of rooms is be a nice sort of rainbow pattern there of different colours and the, the red one will always be the worst performing room the highest watts per meter squared we've got the total watts here and the total energy and if we scroll down we've also got the um, the, the U values used and the what temperatures were above and below the room 
So if we go to, uh, I'll just demonstrate. If we go to the optional pages, and it will come up with a with a, a, an indication of what we need to do next. So it says heat source information required. So okay. So we select this button here, <coughs> and the model. So it's an A8, and at this point it's important to look at manufacturer's data to see what the performance is, what the kilowatt rating is at the external temperature and at, at the designed um, flow temperature to the heating system. Good OK on that. Optional pages. <coughs> so uh, it's important to click through all these optional pages and we you know we can say what we want to include in report etc. Because it's, we're good doing an air source heat pump example we won't have bivalent design um, we won't we want fuel comparison, we certainly don't want ground loop design, but we'll, we'll click through these pages anyway, just confirming. So, um, domestic hot water, number of bedrooms, say two, um, number of occupants per bedroom, one, and flow temperature from the heat pump, we'll put 55 degrees, and that's, we've done that now. And we want to include in the report, so that's good. Emitters and performance. Um, so the first thing we want to do here is select a flow temperature for each room. So we click on dining room and let's say 45 degrees, click OK. And straight away it's you know because we've indicated screed with tiles in the survey within the app, it's calculated that we need um, a maximum pipe spacing of 300. So that's all good. And it's used the SCOP value from um, the heat pump uh, data. And if again if you've got like 20 rooms, you don't want to keep clicking on the same flow temperature all the time you can use this copy all feature click on the value which highlighted blue and then it's copied that 45 through you can easily change it again if you want to so you, you, you'll recall that we entered in a uh, radiator I think it was a K2 radiator <coughs> for bedroom one and what it's done is it worked it's worked out the undersized um, factor so it's, it's um, undersized by 16% and of course what we do here to work out uh, the oversized factor is we times the room heat loss by in this case 3.1 which is dictated by the flow temperature and the output required is uh, nine, just over 1900 watts so um, we're all happy with this anyway for the report if we go to uh, current radiators there's the K2 that we selected and there's the output at a delta T of 50 and we've got all the room, all the um, flow temperatures out, um, all the flow temperatures with the outputs at those corresponding flow temperatures, which is a nice um, reference. So you can uh, just just double check what what readings you're getting from that radiator. Yes, we want to include it, include it in the report by rain design to show us. We're having a separate video on all this, but in this case we don't want to include it, so we'll just leave, leave it as no fuel comparison. Um, so we could tick various sort of things. If you wanted to, if you're, if you want to encourage your client to use, say, a, um, a renewable technology, this could be a good, a good way to com uh, compare, compare costs. Um, we could reduce that oil price to, say, forty-five, so more realistic. Um, but it's um, it's just there as a bit of extra information if you want to have a look at different types of technologies, and you can include it in the report. We go to uh, ground loop design. Um, we don't want again. We don't want to include this in the report because we're doing an air source heat pump one. But you'll just see the information is is there available. We'll do another video on the ground loop uh, ground loop design. Go to summary results, <coughs> and here's our summary. So we've got the heat source selected um, and the worst performing room, and the running costs, and the energy. For, for, the, for the total of the year. Obviously it's pretty low because we've only got two rooms in this case. Go to save and review. <clears throat> oh, by the way, the, 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 any information about the green deal, um, it won't be, it's not included on the report. So uh, you'll notice that when we, when we produce the report that uh, there'd be no green deal information. It's just obviously just the EPC is required if it's for an MCS installation. So here is the MS3005 references, so the MCS auditor can make reference to the numbers on the left hand side here with the corresponding values. So it's all populated for you. 
go to the dashboard and we can go to completed reports now and we go to sea view cottage the other one so click on download report so it's just downloading and then we can um, go to uh, save there double click open it and then it's just so you can see on the screen so um, I didn't complete the whole installation address but naturally that would appear all there you've got your address here um, your lo your logo here as well um, scroll down there's the contents there's the summary results and the disclaimer down here which says you know you must have a an energy assessor to do the EPC again for if it's a, a heat pump um, report if it's an oil LPG this this paragraph won't be in here so each report is different for the for, for the technology room features dimensions used vaulted room details building materials used <clears throat> so it's all highlighted there domestic hot water calculation uh, the emitters and performance so we can see the star rating for each room and of course the watts per meter squared and there's the current radiator outputs and the heat pump summary so that's all there so that concludes this video now on reviewing a survey online at heat-engineer.com